just about to put them out and <laughs> oh my god it's not good <laughs> oh. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Ben from Parker Baits and welcome back to another fishing video. Now, would you believe it? Look at this, mate. It is snowing. I'm in England. I'm on the famous RH Fisheries sort of complex and I'm on M1 and I'm with one of the Parker Baits ambassadors and I'm with Rob. Look at this, mate. It's snowing. Would you believe it? We're really up against it on this particular session in regards to the weather. It's dropped dramatically in the last week. It's been almost like spring weather um, <laughs> or good weather the last couple of weeks and then it's dropped again add to but being that we're a little bit further up country I'm from down south I'm not used to seeing this at all so <laughs> this is crazy half the lakes frozen over and you can see over the back there it's starting to lay on top of the ice but yeah hopefully room for a treat we can get some absolute nossa pigs on the bank come on the carp <laughs> say so come on the Parker baits I'm gonna be using some hook baits today up here and um, playing about with that really so yeah that's where I'm at that's what I'm doing that's who I'm with guys before I start this video give us a thumbs up make sure you comment down below smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos going forward and hopefully me and Rob can bring you an absolute banger it'd be lovely to see I think it's Richie because it goes over 50 pound <laughs> come on the car right wow just keep in the loop, be rude not to. There's old Robbie boy. So you've got peg 14, I'm in 15. Just griddling some maggots here. Coffee on the go and you'll be proud of me because look at this. Well, I say proud of me. Look at that, mate. Clean as a whistle, no stains. The missus got hold of it, didn't she? And um, put it in the <laughs> dishwasher. There's a rods, two rods here. Two rod rule. Um, you sort of there's two pegs down the end but this this peg's got you got each pegs got a nice bit of water really that's what I do like about up here um, but yeah, as you can see from all the way along here this is ice and obviously where it was snowing earlier it's all laid on top of that ice and it's crazy there's actually someone over there there's nobody over the back here there's nobody over here so you've got Rob and then there's two people up from him and apparently there's been fish showing up here over the last couple of days from what the bailiff said um, there's actually an aerator over here so you've got a, f a fizz box on the bottom there but they you can cast over them apparently it's no issue at all and then you've got another oxygenator over here um, pumping the oxygen in and keeping them fish nice and healthy but I tell you what there's some absolute pigs in it there really 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 is there's some absolute monsters in it and I really really cannot wait to get my teeth into the next few days up here just one fish would be lovely that's what i'm gonna aim for being in these conditions it is horrendous but looking forward to a coffee quick update i'm sure i'll touch on where i've got my rods over the next couple of days but yeah that's what i'm doing that's what it looks like coffee is well needed three o'clock start this morning Whew. It is snowing out there now, I'm locked in. My baits are out over here, I've got two rods absolutely on the money. I'm going to take them out of the pole. It's absolutely snowing a hooli out there, it really is. The camera's not picking it up, but it's coming down quite hard. Really starting to lay on that ice across the, across the, across the lake. And um, hopefully it doesn't sort of encroach across and stop us from fishing where we need to be.
wow this is very interesting because the winds completely changed now it's coming in towards us which is nice but it's going to be interesting whether they now see it sit off the back of it or it pulls the fish this way because it is a cold wind it's not a nice wind but I'm not down here I'm out over here so I'm still sort of feeding that body that main body of water if you like so yeah what is going to happen? What's going to unfold over the next few days? Looks mega, mate. It really does. It's like bluey water. It's obviously get, gets dyed. A beautiful, beautiful place. Lovely and clean. Turned up. All the pegs were lovely. Clean. Again, I'm sure I'll touch on that more over the next few days. But what a venue. So a complete change of scenery so that ice that was stuck over there the swans come in broke it split it in the middle and it slowly parted so rob got the carnage first you can see this slab that's pushed up against his rods now he's got his tips under the water i thought i got away with it i had a nice strip up the middle right to my spot i thought that's lovely absolutely beautiful no longer than 20 minutes later i've got this in front of me it's a massive ice <laughs> patches come over wipe my rods out I've, I've, well it's not wiped them out I've managed to save it I've got the tips now lower I've even got that on the back to help not ideal but the rods are out they're on the money I've slackened right off now can't really do much more but then rods are probably going to stay out till at least tomorrow midday I'm not going to ruin them in in the morning I'm going to let the spots rest and hopefully just hopefully something happens so I'm going to leave it at that get back in my hands are freezing Whew. So the ice has now moved. My plan of action is, because um, I think it's pulled that right hand rod, so I'm probably going to redo both of them. But instead of fishing two out there on the money, I'm going to fish one out there and one over towards the air rate. Not on it, just off it, where these three trees are. I can then line up with that at night time if I have one. And know the pole lamps down there. I'll go from there. But that's the plan of action now. I'm going to redo that right hand rod to begin with. And then work off the back of that. That light's dropping now, mate, isn't it? Very nice. Yeah, beautiful, absolutely beautiful it is up here. If I'm honest with you, I've just done the rods. Well, I've done the other rod about half an hour ago, and I've just done the left hand rod, and I am very, very happy. Very happy. Will give me a hand. And yeah, they are on the money. I physically can't do no more than that. I'm probably going to leave them now till 12 o'clock tomorrow. And I've spoke about this before on the channel. A lot of people um, get up in the morning, first thing they do, rearing in. Um, and I do feel that sometimes, not all lakes, but I do feel um, sometimes you can nick a bite in the morning. If you just leave them rods out a little bit more. Um, and it's done me some whackers in the past. So that's exactly what I'm going to do tomorrow. Probably leave it past 10. 11 see if anybody else turns up start smashing leads in and stuff and um yeah go from there really probably put bring it in about half 11 12 if i had nothing unless i see some an obvious show or what have you and i can obviously re react upon it and um go from there but what a lovely evening mate i think it's probably time for a coffee eh yes <laughs> yes yes <laughs> goes foodie bits this evening and I've got a steak and ale pie how this is going to turn out I do not know Rob's already laughing it's going to be interesting to say the least but if I like donk that on there maybe what are you thinking here Rob um, is it going to cook like that or should do, should you reckon what have you put? There we go then, we'll leave it at that. Oh god. Oh no. Oh no. Let's have a look. Oh no, we're good. Yeah, we're alright mate. Lovely. <laughs> Some eggy bread. Some ketchup for you. Well, that's how it's going at the moment. I think I just saved it. We can get away with that. Don't give up on me now, people. It's all right. Should be good. Oh, 
pie sandwich I'm thinking I've just uh, taken the tray off the bottom of the, the pie there or the tin foil whatever you want to call it cook that for a little bit and see if it's warm inside probably stone cold but we'll see so there it is a bit of Nando's Peary Perinays I'm not going to lie, that looks a little bit like cat sick, doesn't it that, but looks warm-ish, so I'm going to put that in that bread, heat that, I'm not going to be able to record that guys, but yeah, lovely, yeah, lovely, I guess. Well, I don't want to keep the light on too long, but it's lights out for me, early night been a very very busy day up early hours it's about half past eight now something like that Rob's topping up next to me but yeah good night all and I'll touch base with you tomorrow and hopefully before with a fish definitely before with a fish <laughs> see you soon so it's just coming up to uh, 10 to 1 and I've just had a line on the right hand rod gone half past six and I keep getting liners on that right hand rod and I mean I've had two now in the space of ten minutes same amount of wind all night and then I've just had two liners so it's not wind it's not a bit of twig it's not nothing it's not nothing caught on the rods or anything like that I reckon there's fish out there and they're knocking that line and there's big fish out there more excited than this just come on please rod crank round right hand rod go <sighs> mate first I want to put that up it's blooming cold um I've been up most of the night I look like absolute death if I'm honest with you but um so from about half past six I stayed up for an hour I've been up throughout the night I can just say I had a lot of beeps, I had a lot of beeps on that right hand rod. Um, I had a few on the left hand rod, but it was, um, it come to light quite quickly because I had two or three beeps. I thought, no, I need to, and I, and you know, when you can get up and you can sort of look at your rods, check your bobbins. This was like, I need to get up and check. So I physically got out of bed, got out, checked, and I had a twig about this big sat on the end of my line. And what I was doing is, is obviously the wind's coming in towards me. It was pushing the line and obviously setting off my alarm, so that was a bit frustrating. But obviously, what I'd done is then I just got my pole connections and I flipped this twig off. There's still a little twig on there now, I couldn't get that one off, but um, not enough for that to um, set the alarm off anyway. But no fish. Um, I don't think Rob's had anything last night, but. <sighs> Excuse me, God. Apologies. Um, but we have got, see it's a weird one there, and you're probably going to be thinking, what do you mean Ben? So tonight we've actually got to hand our rods in, um, which I love about up here, because they actually rest the lake a couple of times a week. Now tonight is the night where they rest it, so we've booked on, um, so basically about 6 o'clock tonight I've actually got to give my rods in, and I can grab them again tomorrow morning at 7. That's just their rules here, and I'm completely fine with that. And I do see the science behind it and I think it's a great idea. Um, so I think what we're going to do tonight is me and Rob are going to have a couple of um, Disaranos, be quite nice and um, go crazy, just have a couple of drinks, watch the water. Um, I think we can keep bait going in, don't quote me on that, obviously I need to check that with them, but I think we can keep bait going in, which is a bonus, because obviously I'll, throughout the night tonight I can top up as, as necessary. And obviously get the rods in the morning, put them straight back out of the spot so you don't let the fish in there. Clearly that they've had 12 hours of rest and um, been able to feed on them spots with no lines in the water, so there's no line pressure whatsoever. So my um, coffee's struggling down here, so I'm going to get my gas can and shake it a little bit. So um, <laughs> it's, it's probably frozen the gas in there, or nearly frozen, so it's struggling at the moment. It's going so I'm going to do that now 
um, have a nice coffee with Rob, wake up a little bit more and um, yeah, watch the water really. I don't think I've heard or seen anything else in regards to um, fish captures on the time we've been here. But it is cold, very, very cold. On the breakfast menus this morning is eggs, double egg whammy. One smashed and one not smashed. Yeah, I'm not very good at that, mate, am I? Um, tried your best. Tried my best, yeah. <laughs> so I flipped the, the Ridge Monkey on steroids down. And uh, I'll get back to you to hopefully show you a lovely eggy sandwich <laughs> with a view. <laughs> Looks lovely, mate. Wind's still tricking in. Absolutely beautiful, isn't it? So, first up is Rob's sandwich, and there it is in all its glory. What do you think of that, mate? <laughs> oh. You're going to have to be careful. Oh. I don't want to ruin my smiley face. <laughs> oh. You got it? Thank you very much. <laughs> right, time to do mine now. And there's mine. <laughs> Lovely jubbly. Right, wow, well, coffee number two. And it's just coming up to 12 o'clock. And nothing, no more, no shows, no nothing. The wind's kicked, it keeps kicking. It's going back the original way, but it sort of keeps kicking ever so slightly to our left. And more coming across than over this sort of way. Um, but yeah, no shows, no beeps, no nothing since I touched base with you earlier, but I've just been having a chat with Rob really. And have you just reminded me a few things, some exciting stuff going into this year and um, Parker Bates will be at their first uh, show. We're gonna be trading at the Big One show this year. I'm gonna bring a few of the ambassadors up with me. My mum and dad are gonna be there to support, I'm sure, and it'll be me and my brother. Um, basically, uh, hopefully to meet a load of new people and uh, talk for our products in great depth to people. I'm really looking forward to it. I really, really am. That's gonna be exciting. And so that's in March. If you are about or you're going to the Big One Show, definitely, definitely, definitely head over to the stand for a chat and go from there. So that's that's um, some big news for this year. But I've now got to start thinking about exactly what I'm gonna do now over the duration in the next hour or so, because I'm, whether I leave the rods and leave it till, so what time do we have to give our rods in? Quarter to quarter five. Quarter to five. So that is the time we got to give our rods in. So if I leave them to quarter to five for the sake of four hours, just leave them on the spot, which I'm really tempted to do. To be honest with you, I'm going to. Is that what you're going to do? Yeah. Um, Rob's behind the camera now, guys, and he's agreeing. He's saying he's, he's going to do that. So you know what? I might do the same. And then obviously we'll hand the rods in. And, and go from there really and that that's that that is it the only thing I will do to that can we put bait out we'd have to put bait out but, uh, yeah. we can put bait out so then we can keep trickling bait out over the duration of the next 12 hours so in the morning when we do get our rods back we'll put them straight back out on the spots and hopefully nick and nick a fish early and get them sort of proactive on the spots like I mentioned earlier and um, with no line pressure and that is the plan of action so there it is that's the update for now and a little bit of noose um, but I'm going to enjoy this coffee and keep watching that water because if there's any slight sign of anything it's going to have a single thrown at it or <laughs> or um, take the pole directly over its head if it's close in. So yeah, there it is. Right, just topping up the bait. I'm actually using my new Parker Baiter and these will be coming very soon to the Parker Bait store. The same thing I use a lot in the fishing is put a lot of big fish in the bank for me. It's an easy way and a very cost effective way of using a bulk bait and pole. Something easy. And you can fish on the money every single time on a dustbin lid without fail. And you know. You can keep putting that bait out there every single time on top of that bin. And fish effectively. That's what I'm going to be doing now, topping up this bait. A couple more. Me. <laughs> That'll do. I'm back 
taking the bivvy now and a couple of scoops out on the money on that left hand rod trying to keep that right hand rod on one drop so literally I've filled the scoop up and just done one drop I say fill the scoop up sprinkled the scoop up done one drop on the right hand rod just to see with that smaller baiting approach whether that changes anything but like I said topped up two half full big scoops um, of some naturals over the top and yeah that's what I've done just wanted to keep in the loop and um, watching the water again now hoping that sink flops over the top of the spot so here he is <laughs> Mr Bold yeah do you want to um, talk us through your swim then mate and um, we get up there yeah it's fine. little short walk lovely little it's quite nice isn't it, it really yeah. I mean perfect for the barrow no problems which is nice it's also a little I'm guessing a little stock pond behind as well because that's a feeder over there <laughs> but yeah he's got his marquee with him massive but this is his swim. Peg 14, is it? This is peg 14, yeah. So it's a bit bigger for a two-man bivvy because, as, as you know, i got the Nossa bivvy. Yeah, yeah, it is a big boy, mate. It allows me to still cast my rods out, so it's a nice big swim. But, yeah, just recently fishing out towards that Christmas tree to the right of the big tree. Yeah. And just mm. fishing two rods in a spot with uh, quite a bit of natural bait, but that's yeah. it, really. Nice. What's your hook baits, mate? I've got two, um, I've, well, I've got one pink uh, with the fish pop-ups. Yeah. With some maggots tied on the top and a pink fruit and nut pop-up. You put many maggots on the top, one or two? Or and I've done, I counted between 20 and 25 on each Whoa, one. Whoa, <laughs> quite a few. A it's a big old ball. Yeah, a big ball, but yeah. Got to reel our rods in tonight, mate, haven't we? No fishing tonight. Sad, but yeah, it's got to be done. Yeah. Every 48 hours on here, they rest the lake for 12 hours. So with it being winter, we got to hand them in a bit earlier than normal. I think when I came up last time in July last year, I was handing the rods in about half six. Yeah. But because obviously it's darker earlier, got to hand them in a bit earlier. But yeah, we've got a nice, say, chilled night, have a nice catch up. Yeah. Still put bait in as well, can't we? But we still feed the spots. Yeah. And then hopefully seven o'clock in the morning. Then we're going to pick our rods up, we'll have them clipped up already, won't we? So And then ready to go, straight, straight on the money. Out then about, hopefully by quarter past seven and fishing again, but yeah. Yeah, it'd be nice, mate, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? I think maybe later on as well, when we get back from the shop, because we're going to yeah, pop to the, pop shop, the shop, just or before or after we drop our rods off or whatever, but we might have a little walk round. So what I'm going to try and do is grab the camera, so if any of you guys watching the video are coming down, or watch the channel are coming down to RH Fisheries, you can then look at M1, and see exactly what's going on through some pegs so I'm going to try and do that I'm not promising I think I'm going to do my best to get around with the camera later on and do that in a couple of the key pegs on this lake although every peg will do fish I think there is ones that definitely stand out so yeah look at that sun mate it's beautiful down here yeah, isn't it, at the moment isn't it because down south some of the lakes are frozen haven't yeah they? they are Limbrook's frozen at the moment which is crazy frozen then yeah saw that on social media this morning count myself lucky so yeah exactly that but a few more hours to go now hopefully we can nick one right guys so i thought it'd be quite interesting um to go over a few key things down here for if you guys are coming down now i think it's absolutely brilliant rh fisheries actually supply the nets being one which is great and that's a gardener net in there and also these poles are really strong which is great so you've got a decent net set up so you don't have to worry about your net and you also don't have to worry about your sling look at that nice thing and a mat it's even got their name um so you've literally there. got everything yeah and also they supply a bucket which i think is quite um well very very good really so mm. the water to put on the fish to keep it safe Obviously this is to stop transmitting disease from lake to lake. Um, very obvious that one and it eliminates any problems. And definitely down the line, um, I don't want to say too much, but when we potentially build another lake, should we say, at Parker Bates HQ, that's all I'm saying. Um, it'd be lovely to re repeat this at our, at our premises for sure. And um, 
I just think it's a sensible thing to do and I'd really, I'd, I really 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 don't know why every other fishery in the country every other fishery in the country doesn't do this but there it is anyway I'm gonna leave it at that but definitely something to keep in mind when you are coming down to the fisheries um, and if there's four or five of you getting in a car and you're limited on space it is very handy this is handy massively handy I mean when we used to get in the vans and go overseas mats is a massive one nets Although it's small here now, but when you've got four or five of them, it, be it becomes quite a big thing alongside slings, buckets and everything else. So something to keep in mind when you're coming down to M1 or any other fit, any other one of the lakes when you're up there. So de definitely something worth mentioning, guys, is how clean it is here. Now, this is my third time up here now. Fourth time up here now. Fish this would be your third. third oh, yeah. Fourth, yeah, fourth. Fourth. So fourth. here once before. Um, Monument 2 and the, si and the Sitch, Sitch yeah. unbelievable, unbelievable, very very clean now that's definitely something I look for when I'm turning up to a venue because the last thing you want is a load of rubbish in your swim when you when, when you turn up it just it just puts a bad taste in your mouth it's always clean now if you just sort of if you want to come and move right? it is like it's like nothing not a, not a crisp packet in sight no bottles no nothing whatsoever Another great thing I thought that I saw Rob do, which I thought was very clever of him, being that there's not much space actually in the swim. I think we should probably touch on that, which is his wrap sticks. Now I can see exactly what he's done there. He's put his wrap sticks up here so you can stand here and have plenty of space to do that. Well, this allows you to do that in these two swims, and I'm sure, yeah, if you were just up, I'd be able to repeat You'd be able to do the same on that one, yeah, there's enough space. Um, I would definitely say Peg 14 for a bigger, bigger bivvy is definitely better than mine. Mine's slightly small, but again, you can get any, you, you know, my, my bivvy fits in there, Vs, it's just that um, Rob's got a marquee. <laughs> every time. So yeah, a little bit more of an insight onto the two swims here on Monument 1. Um, and then Monument 2 is sort of up there, mate. Yeah, it? just it's, over the car park. Yeah, and that's also got a load of massive fishing as well. And I mean, absolute nosopics and yeah. absolute... You can't, you can't even say the word. There's some, br was it? Did he say 1540s or something? Something like that. Something it was crazy a, it was a like big that. number. The yeah. stock levels nearly up to the same as M1 now and here, or the same amount of 40s or something, and then it's... a couple of 50s thrown in the mix. It's just unbelievable for a for a day ticket venue in the UK. Not only to produce that, but be on a be on a be on a basis that anybody can do and turn up to. I think it's absolutely brilliant and an opportunity. You should definitely definitely take advantage of if you haven't come up and give it a try guys um, I'm, I'm the same as you I turn up and it keeps me back for the reasons I've already mentioned in this video I really do love it up here and then you talk about the stock you know where can you compare in the country the stock within this lake it's just it's, it's mind-blowing this one you've got six fish between 48 pounds and 53 that's so that's ridiculous that's just that's and that's the ridiculous. one lake that's, that's just one, M, that's yeah, m1 yeah. that's m1 and obviously then you've got m2 and you've got various other backup lakes and that's only just scraping the surface if you want to learn more about this i'll probably put in the description down below rh fisheries they've got syndicates up here with fish in excess of 60 pound which just blows my mind but what a venue, what a complex. And I'm gonna leave it at that thing. I think that's quite a nice way to end this clip. And I'm sure we'll touch base later on. I imagine when we're going out, getting some food maybe. Go to the co-op, yeah. Local, local shop. Or local shops, yeah. And we'll go for it now. So I'll see you in a bit. And that's it, rods in. Put a little bit more bait out. Sad times. But... Sad times, time to go up the shop, mate, eh? Yes. <sighs> right, well we are now back from the shop drink in hand um, we're not going to be able to possibly touch base on every swim but I think unless that gentleman's jumping in that peg now, he's no. jumping in so we now. can show the peg 11 is it peg 11 where you were before we had a fish peg 11 was where we I had black quick, eye yeah quickly pop down there being that Rob's had fish from this swim before so it's definitely worth popping in that swim and having a quick look but the darts coming in very very fast and um, we should probably get around in now so I'm guessing that's a stock pond, another stock pond in the background. Show us this peg then, mate, where you were before. Oh, definitely a bit of a slope. Very nice peg. I mean, we've got the left-hand side margin down here, which I've seen. And I showed uh, Bob, the fishery manager, and he said it was one of the um, forty-pounder commons. But swimming in that corner. <laughs> So and you've got video on your phone, haven't you? You were showing me that was well, mental. Yeah. That was mental. Big old fat common just back out of the water. Let's head down, should yeah. we? 
how you got your bivvy now, I don't know. It's one of the smaller swims on the lake. Right. So it should have if you've got a marquee. Yeah. <laughs> like Rob. But yeah, so Oh yeah mate, that's naughty, isn't it? Look at that. It's a nice bit of water in front of you, it's your nearest pegs over there, sort of in the gap. But you've got another two aerators on the deck, I'm guessing, over there. Yeah. You can see fizzing off and then... I was basically fishing. Yeah, go on. Two rods on a spot out towards that big bushy tree out there. Any wraps? 18 and a half it was. 18 and a half. So That's the max you can push towards the middle. Right, okay. Fair play. And yeah, I was um, fishing two on, a, two on a baited spot, but one solid bag and one normal rig. And what fish was it you had, mate? I had a fish called Black Eye, which came out at... 34 when I had it, but when I watched the video on their Instagram of the stock taking, it was now up to 38. So what we do is we'll put that on the screen now. Rob, fair play mate, lovely fish. Yeah, lovely fish. But yeah, this is Peg 11. Peg 11, it's very good swim, very good. Through the summer months, there's a lot more overgrown the trees. I can't really see much now, but got nice reeds going down to the yeah, side. Yeah, lovely, lovely. Then yeah, it's got there. a bit of everything. This would be perfect for the pole, wouldn't it? Yeah, lovely mate, honestly. Yeah, very nice too. So there it is, peg 11. And we're all the way right down the other end. And right at the end is the shop. Behind that they've got the bait factory where you first turn up. Safe car parking as well. Locked gates, which is great. Security's well up there. You don't have to worry about your car at night time, which is another thing worth uh, pointing out. But yeah, what an evening. Got to got the rods out, mate. I know, very good. <laughs> So you join me in peg 10, is it? Peg 10, this peg is, 10. yeah. And first off, they really have thought about it. It's almost got like a little bit of a wind shower there to a degree, a couple of, couple of foot off the ground, sort of barricading your bivy in. You've got your slot, at, um, slot bits there, normally where they hang the slings and the nets. You've got a lovely end here. You can put your bivy up one end and then walking on the snow. <laughs> There's the mats there, down to my right. And you can actually put your rods out and have your bivvy set back there. But you mind the big bit of that middle water here. So these are the two pegs, the so 10 and 9 are the pegs that look up the lake. And you've got that middle bit of water. So yeah, naughty peg, it really, really is. I'll quickly show you peg 9 and we'll probably call it a day there because I know there is a gentleman over that side and I don't want to disturb anyone. Nine and then eight. I didn't actually realise there was two swims down the end. So you got nine and eight. Again, repeating the same sort of setup. You've got that bit behind your swim. You could really do. You could set back and have your rods out there, and not have what no worries at all. Be well back from your rods, proper selfie. But yeah, definitely every peg has just got. I'd love my name on it. I really <laughs> would. I'd love to come up here and have a little go in every peg. But unfortunately, this one's a long way for me. Three hours away. But it really is back nice to get back up here at the um, RH Fisheries Complex. It really is. It's just, like I said, it's mind-blowing the stock levels in there. But I think that is a perfect way, guys, to end this evening. And I'll touch base back with you tomorrow morning. So in for a nice a nice sleep tonight. Probably get up about half past six, me and Rob will discuss. We're going to have a nice coffee. Maybe top up with a bit of bait throughout the night. But we're going to discuss that later whilst we're watching the water. Although we're not fishing tonight. I think we'd be naive not to watch the water. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to get in our pegs, lock onto the water, have a drink, and just watch the water. And that is the best thing we can possibly do with the time we've got here, as opposed to just sitting in the bivy, zipping up and staying warm. Being proactive in the morning, we might we might see a show through the night, and in the morning we can then react upon it, act upon it, and get get it on. So there it is. I'm going to leave it at that. That's what we're doing. It's exciting. I can't wait for tomorrow. I'll see you in the morning. RH Fisheries. <laughs> Does it get any classier than that? Put your own bush, mate, with a little. Yeah, let us take you. I'll grab Bob. Ah, come with me. <laughs> we were going to go. I know I ended it, but I can't not show you this. <laughs> oh, no. The wind's coming down this way. It stops the wind. You've got your own private bush. You've got your own private peg. You've got your own private reach. Life's good in this peg. <laughs> Right. Well, got the rods over there. There's some rods. Rob's got his rods there, look. Just about to put them out. And...
Oh my god, it's not good. <laughs> oh. Try that again one more time, Robbie. And. No. <laughs> it is not good. It's The whole lake is absolutely frozen. Uh, so, coffee time. I think just wishful thinking if I'm honest, it's just, just not going to happen mate is it, I don't think, I think we're written off. You've got a little bit of light, sorry light, what am I saying light, I'm half asleep still, you've got a little bit of um, water that's fishable <coughs> over there, which will be peg one I think, where the aerator is and there's that chop on the water, but from here down it's just carnage isn't it, just solid. Yeah, not ideal, not ideal. Coffee on the go, really not looking good though. It's quite thick, it's very thick. I broke some ice here look, earlier. You can get a gauge of how thick it is, that's gotta be five mil. You got minuses coming in tonight, it's just, yeah, it's just, Believe it or not, there's people, we saw a geezer push his barrow round and he's setting up his gear over there, is he? No, sorry, over there at the moment. But I guess that's the only bit of um, water because the air is over there where you can actually fish. Ah, oh, mate. Gutted. Gutted, 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 Rob. Still smiling though, aren't you? Well, trying to be positive. <laughs> this is attempt two. Of, <laughs> this is an attempt two of an outro um, because it's so cold. The lens is actually getting condensed because it's probably slightly warmer than the air around. Anyway, I'm going to speed up because I can already start <laughs> to see it starting to go. So that we've had to finish early, guys. I'm a little bit disappointed. Actually, I'm gutted because we're going home. It's three hours away from me. The lake's frozen over. It's got a complete lid on it, basically and there's no way we're fishing. This lovely fog's rolled over. I was even gonna take you around M2, but that's pointless now because the fog's rolled over. So that's it, that's this video. I really do hope you've liked it, guys. And like I said, I really do apologize. It wasn't the longest video in the world, but I can't do nothing when I'm in this situation. So that's that. So I'm gonna leave it at that, guys. Hopefully you like this video. If you have, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you comment down below. Get that, get that subscribe button down below, get it. Give it a good whack, give it a good <laughs> click. <laughs> and I'm going to leave it at that, guys. Peace out, and I'll see you all soon.